many people have the idea that fossils are evidence of things happening slowly over millions of years, but they're not. Fossils, evidence of something happening quickly, this week on Creation Magazine Live. Welcome to Creation Magazine Live. My name is Richard Fangrad. And I'm Calvin Smith. Now this week on Creation Magazine Live, our topic is fossils, evidence that something happened quickly. Right. <laughs> now as we mentioned, uh, many people have the idea that fossils are evidence of things happening slowly over millions of years. Why do they think that? Why do people think that? Well, it's because whenever people are taught about facts that pertain to events that, that happened in the past that relate to the origins debate, then they're almost always taught from a certain point of view, yes. uh, a specific story about history. Of course, the only real choices are from either a biblical creationist viewpoint or an evolutionary viewpoint, and almost all of our state-run schools teach evolution. So most people have only ever heard that way of interpreting the facts we all observe. So even many Christians simply try to add the evolutionary timeline to the Bible. So that's why they think that's that That's why they think yeah. that. Uh, so people think fossils are very old because of what they have been taught. Uh, for example, here's a picture from a textbook teaching how <laughs> fossils form. You can see the diagram. Almost everyone has seen a diagram like this. You might be familiar with this from a textbook showing the average way fossils form. The text says, one, a fish dies and it sinks to the bottom of a lake. Right, uh, even though a lot of species we see in the fossil record would bloat and float, and float not and just float, float yeah, to the bottom or whatever. Squishy. <laughs> yeah. Never mind that for now. Okay. <laughs> the, the second panel says, number two, the fish rots and only the bones are left and the fish is covered with mud. And then the last panel, number three, says millions of years pass and the mud turns to rock. Over time, the bone matter is completely changed into mineral matter. The fish is now a fossil. That's, those are the labels there. Right, so notice the sequence here. The fish is first covered with mud, then it's supposedly after millions of years that the mud turns to rock. Okay. Uh, millions of years pass and the and mud's turned to rock, that's, that's what it says. So you, you definitely get the idea that the fossil forms over millions, millions of years. Millions of years, yeah. Uh, but that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> Unfossilized bones are not going to stay intact it, 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 when they're in contact with wet soil filled with, with microorganisms, with, with decomposers and, and such, yeah. the bones would have to be permineralized quickly to protect them. And the, the idea of, of slowly making a fossil is, is pretty silly when you really think about mm -hmm. it. And yet almost every student in our public schools have seen it have seen pictures like this and have, have accepted it as science. As science, yeah. yeah. Well, here's another one um, from an exhibit at the Tyrrell Museum in Alberta, in Canada. Uh, this is a world-class museum, same idea. Fish swimming along, fish has a heart attack or something, and then it falls to the bottom and gets covered over slowly, and voila, you get a fossil. Yes, the same inference. Now, yeah. one of the main reasons the idea of fossils uh, the, the idea of fossils forming over millions of years was embedded into the minds of students is because of the concept of uniformitarianism. Right, and we've discussed this several times before, but of course, uh, yes. just to refresh your memory, or if this is new to you, in the early 1800s, 1830 or so, a lawyer turned geologist named Charles Lyell wrote a book called Principles of Geology, which became the benchmark for understanding geology for about the next 150 years or so. Right, yeah. Uh, Lyle's uh, The Present is the Key to the Past concept basically said that the way you see sediments forming in lakes and rivers and oceans today at the rates of sedimentary buildup that has always been constant. For example, in glacial lakes, we see an annual deposit of varves, thin layers, consisting of a layer of sand and one of silt, for example. And if you add up the layers of uh, the layers in the rock, you, you assume that each double layer took a year, then it would have taken millions of years to form. Some of these, these features, they're, they're continuous layers that we see all around the world. Right, I remember being in school and they'd show you like exhibit A for millions of years. And that would usually be a picture of the Grand Canyon, right? Right. Because you can see all of the layers full 
fully exposed, fully exposed there. there yeah. And, and yeah. so then they, you know, they show you that and they teach you what you just mentioned. Well, you probably lay, you know, two varves per year and you add them all up. And, and they're then millimeters they, thick, right? Oh yeah. In the Grand Canyon, that's that's over a mile deep exposed there. Right. Do the math, millions of years. That's right. So it was yeah. it was almost like a straight mathematical equation right. when that concept first got proposed by by Lyle. Of course, now uh, they teach different things to students, modern modern geologists, and we've, we've talked about that before. But what I find most often happens with my audiences, and you found it as well, that is if you put up that picture, the fish getting to the bottom and get covered over slowly, and say, how many people have seen this in a textbook? People put their, their hands up. Has. Yeah. Older folks and also the yeah. younger students. So, yeah. And when we get back, um, we're going to uh, see how textbooks have been evolving and uh, <laughs> to keep up with the times when we get back. Did you know that animals have genetic switches? These are regulatory regions of DNA that control the genes. Scientists have noticed that dramatic things can happen when a genetic switch is mutated. For instance, a mutated genetic switch can dramatically alter the appearance of stickleback fish or generate a great variety of coat colours in animals. Veterinary researcher Dr. Jean Leitner has suggested that God may have created genetic switches to facilitate variation, the switches having been created with a propensity to mutate without negatively affecting other traits. Modifications to genetic switches are not examples of evolution in action, even though they are often spoken of in that manner. Indeed, these changes don't involve new information, new genes arising, and evolutionists cannot explain the existence of the genetic switches in the first place. The more we learn about the complexity of genomes, the more they point to a super-intelligent master programmer. To find out more from Creation Ministries International, visit our website, creation.com. Well, if you just tuned in this week, we're talking about fossils, evidence of something happening quickly. Yeah. And we were just discussing how most people think fossils take long periods of time to form because of what they got taught, uh, right. especially when they were younger in school. Now, here's another textbook describing fossilization. Okay? One, an ancient crocodile dies in a river. Okay, even though all of the fossils of crocodiles look like modern-day crocodiles, so they haven't evolved much, Shh, apparently. Don't be a spoil sport That's a, here. Oh. That's their story. Okay, so second panel. Two, sediments cover the body. Uh, three, over millions of years, well, there it is again, right? The millions of years. Millions of years. The, the sediments become rock, and the crocodile becomes a fossil. And four, the rocky roads exposing the fossil. Okay, so again, always mm -hmm. the millions of years are stuffed in there. Uh, here, here's a children's poster mm -hmm. describing the same thing. Phase one, death. After an organism dies, it slowly sinks to the seafloor. Phase two, deposition. The shell gradually becomes covered with silt and sand sediment. Phase three, petrification. Over millions of years, <laughs> there we go again, yeah. uh, the original shell becomes petrified, rock-like. And finally, phase four, erosion. Millions of years later, the movement of the earth plates exposes the fossil, blah, 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 yeah. et, et, et cetera, et cetera. So it's just yep. constant reinforcement of fossils forming over millions of years. It's just right. drilled into your head. So, you know, I, I found a children's book on Amazon called Fossils Tell of Long Ago. And I was just astonished at the boldness of this, this millions of years indoctrination. I mean, this is a book for little kids, right? So let, let me read a little bit of it yeah. to you here. Uh, great storytelling. Once upon a time, a huge fish was swimming around when along came a smaller fish. Now you have to picture, it's, it's a kid's book, it's got cartoony pictures okay, and everything yeah. like that. So the big fish was so hungry, it swallowed the other fish whole. The big fish died and sank to the bottom of the sea. This happened 90 million years ago. How do we know? We know because the fish turned to stone. The fish became a fossil. A plant or animal that is turned to stone is called a fossil. So they know it's 90 million years old because it's a wow. fossil. So this happened 90 million years ago? Yeah. How do we know? We know because the fish <laughs> turned to stone. Good grief. Uh, how can they get away with this stuff? Yeah. Now, the, the big problem with these stories, because, because that's what they are, they're stories, is that if you try to combine uniformitarian ideas of sediment slowly forming over millions of years around a creature mm -hmm. that could only last a few hundred years at most if, if unprotected in the ground, it just doesn't work. Mm -hmm. The creature would... would quickly be devoured by, by fish, by crabs, by bacteria, etc., etc., long before it could be covered and preserved and then become a fossil. Right. So, uh, now, um, 
some of you might think that creationists don't have much to say in, uh, you know, in influencing the scientific community, but actually we do. You know, there have been enough people <laughs> taught the absurdity of these stories about fossils forming slowly that evolutionists have actually been embarrassed enough to change their stories because of it. And here's some examples. In this diagram, the explanation is as follows. Bear kills the animal. The skin, organs, and flesh are eaten by the bear and scavengers. The soft body parts, such as skin and muscles, rot away. The skeleton falls apart. The bones and teeth remain. Before the bones break up in the sun, the river rises and covers them with a layer of sand. Minerals in the bones are dissolved away. These are replaced with minerals in the ground. This takes a very long time. Okay, so that's where they put in the, the long ages. Not in the sedimentary rates, but not in the, the, the rapid burial. Right. Or they, they're saying it's rapid burial, but in the mineralization of the fossil. Right. And, and from there, they say that the, uh, the, the mud built up and rock layers formed, yada, yada. <laughs> like the, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, well, here's one last example. Uh, here we see a diagram, but the explanation is kind of fuzzy. Mm, it fuzzier. says, uh, number one, the animal dies and falls to the bottom of the ocean. That's pretty typical uh, of you... Of, of these other drawings. Number two, it's covered very quickly with sand and very mud to quickly. protect it quickly uh, to protect it from scavengers. Most of the body parts, except the skeleton, are eaten by bacteria and have dissolved away. Number three, lots of layers of sand and dirt pile up on top of the skeleton. Water is rich in minerals, and the skeleton soaks up the water. The minerals attach itself to the bone and replace the actual bone. Number four. Erosion and uplift eventually bring the fossil to the surface where it can be found. So here we, we clearly see the mention as creationists have been doing for a long time now that the animal gets covered quickly. But yes. the timeline's kind of fuzzy from there. Now when we get back, we'll look into why the story is changing and we'll be back in just a minute. For a more in-depth understanding of topics relating to the creation-evolution debate, the Journal of Creation contains peer-reviewed research papers that support the biblical account of creation, the flood, and the fall. One subscriber said, I always assumed that this journal would be too academic for me. Not so. I am a Christian with a very inquiring mind. With each issue, I find powerful articles that open doors and shine light on my understanding of the world. Each journal of creation is more than 120 pages and published three times a year. To subscribe, visit creation.com. Okay, on this week's episode, we're talking about fossils, evidence that something happened quickly. Mm -hmm. Now, in the last segment, we saw how evolutionary explanations of how fossils must have formed are actually starting to switch over to more of a creationist type of explanation, yeah. what we've been saying for years. The creatures must have been buried in sediment quickly rather than slowly. That's a key feature in fossilization. Yeah, but, but wait a sec here. If the sediments have to bury the creature quickly, what happened to Lyle's story of sediments building up slowly over hundreds of thousands and eventually yeah. millions of years? <laughs> if layers get down, laid down very quickly, what happened to the timeline? If, if you can't count the layers themselves as evidence of millions of years, then why would you believe in millions of years anyway? Right. Uh, some creatures like dinosaurs would have been maybe you know six, seven feet high if, if they were slumped over dead. Mm -hmm. That means you must have buried that creature with a massive amount of sediment all at once so the layers, that, the layers that it's buried in can't count for millions of years. Yeah, and uh, we've shown examples of polystrate fossils before, fossils that pass right. through many layers of uh, you know, tree-like plants that are over 20 feet tall. They must have been buried very rapidly uh, with even larger amounts of sediments. So what could do that? Oh, gee, I wonder. Uh, <laughs> how about a big flood? Yeah. Uh, that would make sense. And of course, we talked about that in, in, in many previous episodes. One of them was uh, episode 23 of season three. It was called Neocatastrophism versus Uniformitarianism. Yeah. We explained how many evolutionary geologists have swapped to neocatastrophism to explain these types of things. It just makes more sense. Yeah. So they're okay with really big floods laying down the rock layers. Yeah. Now, as long as it's not the big flood, Not the a global big flood. flood. Right. Yes, and we explained the massive problems with their idea of many big floods versus one big flood. Yeah. But uh, there's still a glaring error here, as we mentioned in the last segments. Now they're saying that creatures were buried fast, but it's the permineralization or the fossilization process itself that takes millions of years? Yeah, well, hmm. they... they they have to get the millions of years in there somewhere. It's just <laughs> part of life, uh, apparently. Uh, of course, the problem you're, you're, you're pointing out here is that the bones 
that aren't fossilized wouldn't last for millions of years to get fossilized. Right. So they must have been fossilized also quickly, buried quickly and fossilized quickly, which is another nail in the coffin for believing the millions of years. Mm -hmm. uh, now, we've, we've observed things getting, have we, or we can ask the question, have we observed things getting fossilized over millions of years? Well, of course not. No, no. nobody's that old. I mean, right. he, here's a quote from evolutionary paleontologist Dr. Phil Curry. In his book, 101 Questions About Dinosaurs, he said the following, fossilization is a process that can take anything from a few hours to millions of years. The amount of time that it takes for a bone to become completely permineralized is highly variable. If the groundwater is heavily laden with minerals in solution, the process can happen rapidly. That's yeah. an evolutionist. That, that's an evolutionist. We, we've used that quote before because it's it's so it's so powerful. It's, it's good that he's he's honest and, and he wrote that in, in that book there. Here you have an evolutionary paleontologist admitting that fossils can and have been formed in hours. Now he says that it could take place over millions of years. But how can he know that? Right. That's the thing. He's observed the hours, but uh, there's no repeatable observations to confirm right. the, the millions of years. If you believe fossils form over millions of years, you believe it on faith, yes, not a faith observable position. facts. <laughs> so fossilization, fossilization has been observed to happen very quickly given the right conditions. You know, for example, five Japanese scientists published an example of rapid petrification after studying a small lake in the crater of a Tatayama, a volcano in, in central Japan. A mineral-rich solution gushes from the bottom and fills the 15-meter pond with steaming acidic water, and of course it cascades over the edge as, as kind of a waterfall. Okay, yeah, the, the scientists found that the naturally fallen wood, the wood that fell naturally into the overflow, was hard and heavy because it was petrified <laughs> with, with, with a mineral called silica. Uh, yet the wood was less than 36 years old, this wood that they first found. So as an experiment, they fastened, they, 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 they fastened fresh pieces of wood in the lake with wire, and after only seven years, the wood had turned to stone. That's right. Amazing. So really their study, you know, clears away a, a powerful objection to believing the Bible. Yes. It means that the rocks and fossils we find on the earth could easily have formed in the 4,500 years since Noah's flood. Yeah. And conditions yeah. would have been favorable for petrification because there was plenty of volcanic activity and mineral rich water at the time. And we'll be back. Half a century ago, Nobel Prize winning biologist Sir Peter Medawar made a startling comment. He declared that the survival of a child in a mother's womb contradicted immunological laws. Since the immune system normally detects foreign tissue and attacks it, you'd expect the mother's immune system to attack the genetically distinct child within her. Well, we now know that it actually does, but the baby survives by putting up a very specific defence. Researchers at the Medical College of Georgia discovered that mammalian embryos produce a special enzyme that suppresses the mother's killer T-cell action. A human embryo starts to produce this enzyme just before it attaches to the mother's uterus. This refutes a major argument used to support abortion, that the embryo is just a part of the mother's body to do with as she pleases. The research clearly shows that the human embryo is distinct from its mother from the beginning. To find out more from Creation Ministries International, visit our website, creation.com. On this week's episode, we're talking about fossils, evidence that something happened quickly. Let's take a look at some fossils that are definitely evidence that something happened quickly. Let's start with some copulating frog hoppers. Yes, you heard correctly. <laughs> <laughs> the earliest record of fossilized copulating insects has recently been unearthed in China. Uh, in sediments from the, the Middle Jurassic, given the, the evolutionary dating of the rocks, uh, two obvious implications of this discovery is the quality of the fossils preserved, which points to rapid burial, and secondly, the creatures remained essentially unchanged over the alleged 165 million years. That's apparently how old they are. Uh, the mating position and overall behavior, as well as the, the genital symmetry, are just the same as in frog hoppers today. <laughs> well, they were certainly <laughs> fossilized pretty quickly. Okay. Rudely interrupted by a big flood, I'd say. Well, anyway, here's another one. In November 2011, researchers uncovered the remains of some 80 baleen whales on the west coast of northern Chile. 20 of the specimens were com uh, complete, and they also found dolphins and a sperm whale uh, all mixed up together. A lot of whales. Yeah. 
So paleontologists were thrilled to find the, the, this, this treasure trove, describing mm. it as very unusual. Lead scientist and paleontologist Nick Pennison uh, thinks the whales all died more or less at the same time after they were trapped in a lagoon. Uh, others suggest they became disoriented and beached themselves. Yeah, well, that's a lot of disoriented of uh, whales and, uh, and dolphins. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, and, and they all got buried very rapidly before they rotted away. And the amount of sediment must have been incredible. I mean, it sounds like a big flood. Right? Very whales, yeah. 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 Now, how about this? Five octopus fossils, supposedly 95 million years old, were recently discovered in Lebanon. They were surprised that the octopuses were even fossilized. I mean, octopuses have no hard parts other than their beak. Right. And one report said that fossilizing an octopus was as unlikely as capturing a fossil sneeze. <laughs> And, and, and they were exquisitely preserved. All eight arms, traces of, of muscles and the rows of suckers that they have were visible. Mm -hmm. Remarkably, a, a few of the fossils even showed remnants of ink. Yes. Amazing. Now, when an octopus dies today, it decomposes in, in, into a slimy blob and disappears within a few days. For an octopus to be fossilized, it would need to sink to the ocean floor and remain there without decomposing or being consumed by bacteria while being buried by sediment. How could such a process be possible to, to produce, uh, how is that possible? How could that possibly, possibly produce an octopus fossil, that kind of yeah, a process? Well, well, the lead author of the report actually said, the luck was that the corpse landed untouched on the seafloor. The seafloor was free of oxygen and therefore flee, free of scavengers. But, but lack of oxygen, is, it, it, it's no preservative. Yeah. I mean, experiments yeah. with, uh, with fish carcasses show that even in the absence of oxygen, they still disintegrate on the ocean bottom. Sure. And, and other scientists have published research showing that the ocean floor is actually teeming with bacterial life. So these scientists haven't you know, explained this remarkable preserved fossilization anyway. Yeah, and uh, no surprise, the specimens look very much like modern octopus today. Mm, As one report announced, uh, these things are 95 million years old, yet one of the fossils is almost indistinguishable mm. from, modern, from, from living species. Right, so we, we almost always have the same pattern, right? Rapid <laughs> yeah. burial, yeah. rapid fossilization, lots of sediment. Now, you know, some are just gonna say, well look, examples of rap rapid pet petrification don't prove the world is young, and they're right, right? Okay. It doesn't prove it. Fair enough. But they do prove that millions of years are not needed, as evolutionary articles so often imply, right. and so it destroys a false objection to accepting biblical history. There is no excuse uh, for people not to accept biblical history. Yeah. Uh, why is all of this important? Because if the fossil record took millions of years to form, then the Bible is wrong about the history of the earth and the life on it. Fossils show death, and, and if death existed millions of years before there was people, then the Bible is wrong when it indicates that these bad things are a part of the curse on creation, which only came about because of the rebellion of the first man, Adam, against his creator. That's right. But according to the book of Genesis, uh, there was a global catastrophe, a worldwide flood, which by implication was capable of burying billions of creatures rapidly in sedimentary layers. Right. So reasoning from scripture, that's where we start first. That's we what our ministry do. is about. Yep. We would expect that most fossils were formed by rapid processes after Adam sinned, and that's just what the facts indicate, and we'll be back. Are you skeptical about Christianity? Perhaps you're a Christian, but know someone who won't consider Christianity. Christianity for Skeptics is one of CMI's most popular books. Written by Drs. Steve Kumar and Jonathan Safati, this powerful resource refutes many attacks on the Christian faith. It contains cutting-edge research, solid theology, and a summary of the Christian roots of science. Questions about Islam, atheism, suffering, evidence for God, and more are answered. Full of bright, catchy illustrations and a sleek modern style, this book draws in any reader. Purchase this resource and many others at creation.com. Well, welcome back. This is the In the News section here. And there's always something going on about the creation evolution debate always in the something. news. And uh, of course, this uh, article we're going to read from here is about dinosaurs. And dinosaurs are kind of like the poster child for evolution, evolution. you yeah. know, when yeah. you think about it. Supposedly millions of years old, died out millions of years old, etc., etc. Um, okay, so this uh, article is called Giant T Dinosaur Had Two Tumors in Its Tailbone. So let's read Ouch. a little bit here. It's fairly common to discover dinosaur remains scratched with ancient claw or bite marks, but finding fossils with signs of tumors is rare. And now scientists have found not 
one but two different types of tumor on the same bone. The vertebrae of a titanosaur, a gigantic, long-necked, long-tailed paleo beast a new study finds. Uh, finding any disease in fossils is rare, said the study's lead researcher, Fernando Barbosa, a doctoral student of geology at the Federal University of Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. Uh, ca cancer still is most rare because of the majority of them do not leave signals in bones. Uh, the finding uh, is the first known case of a tumor in a dinosaur that isn't a duck-billed dinosaur or hadrosaur, the researchers say, and the seven-inch long fossilized vertebrae discovered in 2012 in Brazil's southern San Paulo state belongs to a species in the Titanosauridae family, the most abundant Cretaceous dinosaur family of South America, the researchers wrote in the study. Okay, and it continues, however, the 90-million-year-old bone had an unusual appearance. A small bony button-shaped protuberance, the researchers wrote in the study. Curious, Barbosa and his colleagues decided to investigate the weird bump, which measured just uh, 0.3 by 0.3 inches, so very, very small. They found evidence of two tumors, both benign, Barbosa said. One is an osteoma, uh, a bone overgrowth, which, which researchers confirmed with computer tomography, or CT scans, and an examination of the fossil's structure. Like, Interesting. So it just goes on to describe the tumors, etc. Now, tumors, cancer, let's put all this into a biblical time frame here. Because many Christians have bought into the millions of years, have bought into the idea that God yep. used millions of years to create, and then at the end, you know. So when you look at the end of the, the text, it says, at the end of the creation, God pronounced everything was very good. Well, the only place to put millions of years in the Bible is in the six days of creation. If creatures like this lived and died during the six days of creation, and then God called it very good. Or over the millions of years. Yeah. Yeah. And then after that, Adam sinned, and by one man sin entered into the world, and death through sin, etc., that we read, then what you're saying is God used billions of years of death, but not just like death, like, you know, oh, well, you live a nice life. And nice you go natural death where you go off quietly and die. Yeah, look what violent, it, painful Yeah, stuff. look what it says. It's, it's, it's very common to find dinosaurs with scratch or bite marks. These are creatures ripping each other to shreds, yeah. dying of cancer, yeah. etc. And so um, this, this really undermines the concept of millions of years. And yet there are Christian ministries out there that's what they, that they call them, that, yeah. that are promoting we, millions we can, of years. We can simplify the whole thing. We ask, ask this question. Could God call cancer very good? Mm -hmm. That's uh, right. Duh. No, <laughs> no obviously right. not. When, when, when someone in your congregation gets cancer, you, you pray that God would either, either heal them or reduce their suffering, yep. right? It, you, not, not, you don't say, hey, it's very good. That's great. You got cancer. That's wonderful. And when Jesus was here 2,000 years ago, he didn't go around giving people cancer. Hey, you don't have cancer. <laughs> yeah, they are, now you got cancer. It's he very healed good. those bad Obviously things. not. Which means that this dinosaur that we just reported on here in, the, in this report here, giant dinosaur had two, two tumors on its tailbone, could not have been fossil, could not have lived before that point in history where God calls his creation very good. Doesn't That's make right. any sense. Next week on Creation Magazine Live, we're going to tell you, uh, talk about is evolution pseudoscience. That'll be fun. Make sure you tune in then.